If we can keep the Earth's temperature from warming more than two degrees, we'll be totally fine. But if it goes even a tiny bit above, we're screwed, right? <laughs> two degrees of warming, that's 3.6 degrees in Fahrenheit, is not a magic number. The Earth has already warmed by almost one degree over the past century. And for some people in some parts of the globe, that's already enough warming to be considered dangerous. If you live in the Arctic, you know this. In many places, what used to be permanently frozen ground is now crumbling under your feet as it warms and thaws. In 2009, the US Army Corps of Engineers identified 31 villages at imminent risk. Yet now, a decade later, little has been done to help them. And if you ask the villagers there, many would tell you they're being forced to abandon their homes or find new sources of food due to the warming they've already experienced. Over in Europe, if you talk to family members of some of the 70,000 people who died in the heat wave of 2003, a heat wave that was twice as likely as a result of a changing climate, they'd probably say the amount of change we've already seen is dangerous too. But for many of us, even though the weather has grown increasingly weird in the places where we live, the change is not yet what we call dangerous. Not until we get closer to two degrees would impacts on our food, our water, and our safety become widespread enough to be a serious threat to our way of life. And for a few others, it might be even longer before the mercury reaches a level that would be considered dangerous, perhaps two and a half or even three degrees of warming. Here's the problem though. The time to limit the warming isn't when we actually hit it. By then, it's too late. We have to decide what's dangerous well ahead of time and act now to prevent it. But trying to put a number on exactly how much global temperature change is dangerous and how much carbon we can put into the atmosphere before we hit that level is like trying to put a number on exactly how many cigarettes we can smoke before we develop lung cancer. Now, of course, we know that the more we smoke, the greater the risk. But we also know there's no magic number, as if we could somehow smoke 9,999 cigarettes and we'd be fine, but ooh, if we smoke that 10,000th one, then it's all over. That's silly. The truth is, the more carbon we produce, the faster the climate changes and the greater the danger for all of us. The magic number? It's as low as we can go. Because as far as we humans are concerned, the perfect temperature for us is the temperature we've already had over the last few thousand years. So, Two degrees can seem kind of arbitrary. Where did this idea come from then and why is it so important? To answer that, we have to go back to Rio de Janeiro in 1992, when nearly every country in the world, including the United States, Canada, and the European Union, signed the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. In it, countries agreed to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, at a level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic, that's human, interference with the climate system. Then it took us the next 25 years to agree on exactly what the word dangerous means. Scientists, economists, and policy experts have been studying dangerous change for a long time. In 2005, for example, I presented a paper at a conference organized by the UK government called Avoiding Dangerous Climate Change. They invited experts from all over the world to discuss what might constitute dangerous change for the regions and the sectors that they studied. I was there to talk about the work we'd done looking at climate impacts on California's water supply and their agriculture and their economy. The upshot of all of these studies was that, while there's no magic number, it is clear that the faster and the further we blow past somewhere around two degrees, the greater the risk of serious and even dangerous consequences across the globe including the possibility of some really nasty surprises. So when the world arrived in Paris in December 2015 to finally put a number down on paper and agree to limit global temperature below that level, many countries already had a number in mind, two degrees Celsius. But the poorest countries had a different number, one and a half degrees. And when they proposed it, a lot of other countries agreed that, yeah, that would be a good idea. So the final wording of the Paris Agreement now reads, to keep global temperature rise this century well below two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels, and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to one and a half degrees Celsius. But here's the thing. We've already produced about 560 gigatons of carbon since the beginning of the industrial era. And you know what? About 30% of that 
was emitted in just the 25 years between Rio and Paris. So is it even possible for us to hit the Paris targets? Technically, the one and a half degree target is still feasible. But at the rate we're burning fossil fuels today, unless we figure out a cheap and quick way to suck carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere, we only have about 30 gigatons of carbon left to emit. At today's rates, that's just a few more years worth of emissions. The two degree target is still well within reach. To have a good shot at staying below two degrees, we can produce about 230 more gigatons. And even though current emission rates are starting to level off the last few years, even still, that's less than 25 years worth of emissions. That's why it is so important to cut our emissions of carbon, methane, and other heat trapping gases as soon as possible. Because the faster we do, the less warming we'll see, and the better off we all will be by preventing as much dangerous human interference as possible with the only home we have. <laughs>